Hi, it's a beautiful day in Laguna Beach, California. Weather is absolutely perfect. Let's go into the festival and see what's going on. Come on. Well, hello again. We're actually starting this discussion at the back area of uh, the Art Affair Festival in the Tivoli 2 restaurant and by the waterfall area where many weddings are held and they do a great job of having their weddings during the year in Laguna Beach, California. But today I want to discuss with you protected and exposed merchandising and also the volume of how many paintings you have showing at a festival and what are, what are the chances of your selling and making increased sales. Now, during economic times, when we find that sales may be lower than other times when they are higher, it's very important to have to, to concentrate on lower prices. Now, this show has found that when they sell greeting cards or when the artists sell items under $50, that they end up having continuing success. This is a 60-day show, and just remember, it's 60 one-day shows. So if you're not selling on day one through seven, then you really need to look at your merchandise and see what you're doing that, you, that would improve your sales. Now we passed several booths on the way in, and if you saw the items behind glass, that is what's called protected merchandising. Unless a person is there full time, and this show is open 10 hours a day, they can go to the cashier, the customer can go to the cashier and get a key. However, it takes more time, and many times they will look, but particularly when the prices are hidden, then they just move on to the next booth. The other thing is, many times an item may be protected because the prices are so high. Let's say if it's gold or silver, that they have to be protected. However, when you have more items in your booth, and the top sellers who have been here for 32 years of the 46 that this show has been in business, they have as many as 300 or 400 items in their booth. Now I'm going to show you my booth, and my booth has 66 little miniature paintings. But as you will notice, uh, as I've been talking to you, we have passed many booths. Now, the, there is a booth that has four paintings in it, and they're all over $1,000. So the chances of him selling are much smaller because the market and the economy happens to be in the doldrums right now. If it were in the better days, he would probably do very well. But this is one of those slow years, and we can feel it with all the customers. So, on the other hand, there are many artists that say, no, it's no good to have too many items. But that's really up to you, and you have to be very aware of what your customer wants. So we're going to go to my booth now, and I'm going to discuss a little bit about the exposed marketing that I believe in, and pricing that I believe in, and I hope you enjoy what I have to say. Let's go. In years past, large meetings have been very successful large paintings. However, in recent times, during the recession, it seems that people are concentrating on smaller items and those don't cost quite as much. So I've always had available greeting cards. This is a pack of 10 with envelopes. I also sell greeting cards singly and in twos. So it fits right even with their pocketbook. In another section, I sell these little miniatures, and these again I have, I keep 11 in a row, so there are 33 in this row, and, and 33 in this bin. So I have the price, it's both for originals and jaclays. The jaclays are reductions in size of my major paintings, and then I add um, gel to it and I add paint to them. So they're just as pretty and they look as original, but there's far more detail in them than the original ones. But people do like both and they're both the same price. Now as I move over here, I found that jewelers were doing particularly well. So I decided that I would grind rocks. 
So I go out to Quartzsite, Arizona, and also to rock clubs, and I buy rock slabs like this. And if you look closely, you will see that I'm picking up rock slabs from a in Quartzsite where 200,000 people come, and they all bring their rocks. And so I pick the slabs, and then I decide how I'm going to cut it, and I cut I make little designs on the rock as far as how it will be cut and then I saw the rock like this I saw it it can only saw straight so I saw the rock into little pieces and then I grind it so these items I keep very inexpensive under $55 and some are on little ribbons they're in the $20 range some are on chains for the $30 to $40 range, and then some of the, the larger necklaces are in the $55 to $65 range. This has been very, very successful. So this is what I consider to be exposed merchandising. It allows the people to pick it up, touch it, feel it, try it on. The difference would be is that if it were protected, all of this would be behind glass, and they would have to just look and decide, hmm, do they want to come up to the cashier area and have someone get a key and come over and help them try it on. In this case, they can just try it on and they're good to go. The other thing I want to make clear is that I am a big advocate of having all kinds of price ranges and having many things in my booth. If I have 66 items here, I have over 100 items here, and I have another 50 items between the greeting cards and the pictures, so I'm well over 300 items. I hope that you consider very carefully how you're going to price your items and what the particular vendor, venue can handle. It's very important to increase your sales. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you watch my other videos. Bye-bye.